Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Goodbye Vienna. And this is the story of a farewell that the world will always remember, and which a soldier will never forget. As proudly we hail the United States Army. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but right here, I'd like to talk to all the young gals listening in. Say, tell me, gals, you kind of tired of the same old office routine? Well, okay, now you can get away from it all. Join the Women's Army Corps. You can travel all over the world, meet new friends, see new places. That's right. In the Women's Army Corps, you can escape from the humdrum routine of your present life. Visit exciting places in your country and abroad. Make new friends among young men and women all over the world. And you'll have plenty of leisure time to enjoy your travels, too. You see, you get a 30-day paid vacation each and every year, plus many weekend passes. And, of course, there are always the holidays. So why don't you join the WAC? Remember, gals, you're going to enjoy life more. In the Women's Army Corps. And now the first act curtain of the proudly we hail production, Goodbye Vienna. Our trucks are all loaded, lined up, ready to go. Just a few minutes and we'll be leaving all this. Vienna. Was it only four months ago that we came here? All I know is that between now and... And I don't know whether it's been good or bad. Two 19-year-old PFCs, fresh out of basic training. Joe and I. On our way to our first permanent assignment. Headquarters, U.S. Forces, Vienna, Austria. Yeah, so this is Austria, huh? From here it looks good. Yeah, if you like mountains. Well, it's not all mountains. I see a river ahead there. Hey, I wonder if that's the Danube. Well, let's ask. Hey, Sergeant Clancy, what river is that? The Danube. Oh. Looks nice, doesn't it? It shows some beautiful scenery around here. Yeah, sure looks nice. Now, you see that mountain there, the little building on top of it? That's a hotel. A friend of mine owns that. Herr Gustav Henkel. Great guy. It's kind of small for a hotel. All in the way you look at it. For him, it's too big. Well, how's that? Well, he's in an out-of-the-way place, and he just doesn't get enough guests. Look, uh... You fellas don't mind if I make a sort of a pitch, do you? Pitch for what? His hotel. I just sort of stumbled on it one day when I was taking a little motorcycle trip. And brother, you can't beat it. He's got the best food this side of Vienna. And there's some wonderful fishing in those mountain streams around there. But best of all, the air is like... Well, it'll make a new man out of you. <laughs> How can air do anything like that? Well, it's, it's, it's so dry and clear. Let me tell you something. When I went there, I had a post-nasal drip. And you know how stubborn that can be. Believe it or not, in two days, I was rid of it. Just like that. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Sarge. I'm not a drip yet, but if I ever become one, I'll sure look them up. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of Joe's jokes, and the sergeant took it with good grace. However, time has a way of changing things. What's said as a joke sometimes turns out later to be exactly the opposite. But for us, time was something to be passed. And it passed very quickly that day. In a matter of minutes, our train pulled in and we were reporting in at company headquarters to the first sergeant. PFC's Blake Ken Hoffman. Well, that's us, sergeant. So I see. Well, men, we're glad to have you here in headquarters company. As you probably know, we've been here in Vienna a long time, but the way things look now, the picture might change. And if it does, there's going to be much work to be done. And a lot of that will be in message center. Did you ever hear of a teletype machine? Yeah, I have. Good. Well, since you know how to type, it won't take you long to learn their operation. Oh, uh, one other thing. Uh, you're stationed in one of the most beautiful and interesting cities in the world. Take advantage of it. 
As the Sarge predicted, it didn't take long for us to learn our new jobs. And handling all those messages that were always coming in over the wires made us feel that we were right in the middle of important events. It was a lot of work. But we followed the sergeant's advice and in our free time tried to take in as much as we could of this 2,000-year-old city, Vienna. And here is the Heldenplatz with its statue of Archduke Charles, noted for its astounding balance, in which the whole mass of the statue rests on the hind hoofs of the horse. And here in the Minoretenkirche, you will see the famous mosaic copy of the Last Supper. And next, I show you the Clockmakers Museum. Kunst Historische Museum. The Burg Theater. Stefan's Kirche. The Stadt Park. And on Sunday morning, the Vienna Boys Choir. They can really sing, can't they, Ted? I'll say. Hey, where'll we go now, Joe? Well, some of the guys said that restaurant up on that mountain, what's it, uh, Kallenberg? Yeah. Well, it's supposed to serve some torten that's out of this world. Want to try some? Okay, by me. Let's go. Oh, coffee with whipped cream yet. How about I gained 10 pounds since we've been here? Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, you ready to do some more sightseeing? Yeah, look, I'll tell you what, Ted. We can see the whole city from right here. Let's sightsee sitting down, huh? I don't think I can get up. <laughs> it's okay by me. Hey, hmm? hey, speaking of sights, look at the next table there. Ooh, not bad. That's putting it mildly. Looks like she's alone. Uh, easy, boy, easy. No, <laughs> she's not alone. What? Three, five, eight kids. Gosh, they couldn't all be hers. Oh, no. Ooh. The kid called her Tanta. That means aunt. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, Joe, I've got an idea. Uh, hey, kitties, you mind if I take your photograph? Oh, I am sorry. I do not think they wish to have their photographs made. Well, why not? Thank you very much. Come, kinder, we mustn't this game. Thank you. Oh, how do you like that? Hey, you know that's the first civilian ever given us the brush since we've been here? Well, who knows? Maybe she has a reason. Maybe she did have a reason. The rest of that day, I kept wondering why she had run off like that with those kids, as if we were going to bite their heads off. The next morning, the first sergeant came in a message center, and I happened to tell him about it. You sure you didn't say anything that might have offended her? Well, sure, I'm sure all I wanted to do was take a picture. Yeah. Well, Blake, you know, there could be many reasons. These people here have been through a lot. Annexation, war, occupation. They know why we're here. Most of them are our friends, but... Maybe they'd like to be on their own. I can't really blame them. If anyone can understand that, it should be us. Yeah, I guess so. And the way things look, they might get their chance pretty soon. In the meantime, think of yourself as a guest. Now, you better get this message off to Salzburg G3 right away. Huh? Okay, Sarge. Hey, Ted. Yeah? Oh, hi, Sarge. Hello, Hoffman. Any mail for me, Joe? Uh, no, but I got a letter from home. And guess what? My folks want me to look up some relatives. Relatives where? Here in Vienna. An aunt and uncle of mine. What, you've got an aunt and uncle right here in Vienna? Why don't you look for him before? Well, I didn't know I had any here. Well, you know how it is. My folks came from Europe, and well, I've got so many aunts and uncles and cousins scattered around that I, well, I was never able to keep track of them. Oh, didn't they ever write? Sure to my folks, but I never paid much attention to their letters. Where they live? Well, <laughs> their last address was... Uh... Uh, 21 Silbergasse. <laughs> that was back in 1938. 38? You mean that's the last time you heard from them? Yeah. Well, they stopped writing then. Hmm. Hey, you want to look for them tonight, Joe? Well, I was planning to. You mind if I tag along? <laughs> I was just going to ask you. Two heads are better than one. Looking back now, it's easy to see that we could have used a lot more heads. But at that time... Well, it didn't seem like much of a problem. All we had to do was find 21 silver gossip. Here it is, 21 silver gossip. Well, thanks, driver. Uh, here you are. Vielen Dank, mein Herr. 
Wow, some house. Oh, they must be loaded. Hey, it's a regular estate. Well, let's give it a try, huh? Gee, Ted, I, I got a kind of funny feeling. What are you scared of? They're your relatives. Yeah, but a house like... Yeah. Uh, is... Well, that is... A... Do a Mr. and Mrs. Gustav Hoffman live here? Hoffman? I am sorry. You have the wrong address. Well, this is 21 Silbergasse, isn't it? Yeah. What is it, Jan? Uh, two American soldiers, madame. Oh, guten Tag. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, I don't know. I, I'm looking for my aunt and uncle, Mr. and Mrs. Gustav Hoffman. Oh, I am sorry, but they do not live here anymore. Well, then they did once? Yes, but uh, that was a long time ago. Well, would you happen to know where they are now? I am afraid I do not, but I do know where they moved to from here. Oh. You see, their forwarding address was left behind when they, uh, when they, uh, uh, now, now let me think. Ah, uh, 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 yes, yes, Althofstrasse, and the number... Uh, 45, madame. I have forwarded the mail there. Thank you, Jan. Well, thanks a lot, ma'am. I guess we'd better be going. Oh, won't you have some coffee before you go? Well, no, thanks. It's getting kind of late. Maybe I can still find him this evening. I hope so. I hope so. Well, we didn't find him that evening, or the next, or the next. It took us about three weeks, three weeks of chasing from one address to another. We felt like real private eyes. During this time, our clues led us gradually from the best part of town to the other side of the tracks, for the sake. It was like following in the footsteps of a family's lives. Well, the way I figure, they were in the bucks once and then lost their money. From the looks of this neighborhood, must have ended up broke. Well, maybe that's why they didn't write to you. That's a good point. Probably too proud. Yeah, maybe we'll get the answer here. Gee, what a broken down house. A store on the ground floor. Well, there's a hallway. Let's go up. Okay. Try this door here. Oh, I want to come down from 21 Silbergasse. Uh, pardon me, lady. Could you tell us if a Mr. and Mrs. Hoffman live here? Nein. Uh, did they ever? Nein. Well, do you know where they are now, maybe? Ich weiß nichts. But... Well, now I know how a door-to-door -door salesman feels. Well, Joe, it looks like we've come to the end of the line. Yeah, it looks that way. But I wonder why she acted like that. It was almost as if she was afraid or something. Who knows? Don't forget, this is an international city. Oh, sure, but still, she acted as if we... Herr Soldat, Herr Soldat, my mother said she sold us in geben. What? What'd she give you? A picture of a girl. Hmm. Must be about 12 years old. Pretty little kid. Hey, look at this on the back. Hmm? Goethe Hoffman, 1938. Why, this must be... Your cousin. I'll bet you anything. Hey, let's get back up there. They won't answer. Joe, I've got a feeling. Well, what do you mean? I can't explain it, but there's something about this photograph. Oh, come on. Let's get out of here, Ted. You are listening to the proudly we have production, Goodbye Vienna. And we will return in just one moment for our second act. But first, young man, let's talk about your future and America's future. They're important to each other, you know, and to you. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you, a job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. And now the second act curtain of the proudly we hail production, Goodbye Vienna. Sitting here in Vienna in the truck waiting for the company to pull out, I can hardly believe that it was only three months ago since it happened. 
I can see from here the Kallenberg Mountain and the white building on top of it. The Kallenberg Restaurant. It was May 15th, a Sunday, the day after we were given the photo of the girl. Joe and I had got into the habit of spending our Sunday mornings there, mainly because of the coffee and the whipped cream and the view. Might as well relax and enjoy it. <laughs> Probably won't be able to much longer. Why, how come? Well, the treaty. The signing it today. Austria is, as of this moment, an independent nation. Oh, that's right. And that means we'll have about three months to move out. I guess I'll be sorry to go. Yeah, this is a nice town. And it is. Another coffee, waiter, please. Hey, look, Ted, there's that girl and her kids. Well, what girl? Well, you know, the one who wouldn't let you take her picture. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm not going to ask. Well, what's the matter? You tell us something wrong? No, nothing wrong. Just. Joe, did you hear that? What? Did you hear what that kid called her? Gerda. Well, sure. So what? This is what. Take a look at this photo and then look at her. At who? The girl there. Can't what? you see the resemblance? I'm sorry. This is a 12 year old girl, and that's a well. Well, that's a grown woman. Listen, this picture was taken in 1938. Yeah, you're right. Now turn over the picture. Gerda, see? Gerda Hoffman. Yeah. The first name is the same. You know what reminded me of something? Oh, I forgot her name. Well, I didn't quite, and I'm going to find out right now. Uh, uh, pardon me, uh, Miss Hoffman? Yeah? That is your name, isn't it? Gerda Hoffman. Yeah? But how did you... Hey, Joe, come here. Miss Hoffman... Meet PFC Joe Hoffman. You are Hoffman? Yeah, that's right, miss. Miss Hoffman, answer me one question. Did you or your family ever live at 21 Silbergasse in 1938? Silbergasse. Yeah, we did. Okay, but... Joe. Take over. <laughs> well, this is really something. Gerda, well, your father and, and my father are brothers. You and I, we're cousins. While Joe and Gerda caught up with the lost years, I took over the kids and bought them some candy and cakes. I learned from them that Gerda wasn't really their aunt, but a social worker at the orphanage from which these kids came. They were crazy about Gerda, but that was something they didn't have to tell me. From the little I'd seen of her, I knew that that kind of feeling about her wouldn't be too hard to come by for for anyone. The relatives Joe was looking for were dead, killed by the Nazis. During the following weeks, Gerda took Joe and me around to show us the Vienna very few tourists or visitors ever get to know. I guess it's like meetings between people. You might think you know somebody, but to find out what the real man is, it'll take his wife or mother or child to tell you. It was like that with Gerda. She was a child of Vienna. And like Vienna, charming and lovable, but kind of sad, too. I remember one day, well, this was soon after Joe had found himself a nice little girl who was showing him the sights, and I found myself spending a lot of time with Gerda, alone. Well, Ted, how do you like our Prater Park? Swell. Dig that big Ferris wheel. Say, Gerda, want to go for a ride in it? Uh, no, thanks, Ted. Uh, you go ahead if you want to. It wouldn't be any fun without you. And uh, I'm beginning to think that uh, there's not much that would be. Let's sit down on this bench a minute, okay? All right, Ted. Oh, this is a beautiful night. Gerda, you might think this is corny, but I... I... I never knew what the word beautiful meant until I met you. You are sweet, Ted. You're laughing at me. No, I am not. I laughed because I felt happy. And I have not felt like that in a long time. I know. You know? Yes. That was the first time I've ever heard you laugh since I've known you. And your eyes. There's a shadow deep down within them. You've had plenty of reason, but you've got to drive that shadow away and let... Let me help you. You have helped it. Oh, you know I think I have. I, I remember the first day I saw you, the day I wanted to take your photo. I remember I was quite abrupt with you. That's the word, all right. 
I'm sorry, Ted, but it was your uniform. My uniform? What's the matter with it? Nothing. It. I suppose I am silly, but I have a prejudice against uniforms of any kind. They remind me of those... of those days when my parents... There's a difference between those and this one. I know, I know, but... you do understand, don't you? Yes, I do. Maybe I better take you home now, huh? All right, Ted. All right. It was only natural that she felt the way she did, but I wanted to snap her out of it. I had to, because I'd never met a girl like her before. I wanted the meeting to last a long, long time. On the way home that night, I made a date to take her to the opera the next weekend. However, when Saturday came, she didn't show up for our date. When I checked at her apartment, she wasn't there either. All kinds of thoughts went through my mind, but on a hunch, I decided to go down to the orphanage where she worked during the day. She was there all right. Oh, Ted, I'm sorry about tonight, but I could not make it. Gerda, what is it? You look so excited. Uh, it's, it's the children. Come, listen by their door. <coughs> What's the matter with them? Hoping cough, I think you call it. The doctor says it's an epidemic. It will be difficult to cure, so... You see, I must stay with them. Oh, sure, of course. Well, Gerd, is there anything I can do? Oh, nothing here, Ted. Maybe hope a little. Hope. After listening to those kids for a while, I knew it would take more than hope to help them recover. And it turned out I was right. For the next few weeks, their cough hung on. Golly, I'm sorry to hear about it, Ted. They just can't seem to knock it out of them. Yeah, I had it when I was a kid for weeks. They finally had to take me out west somewhere. I think it was in the Rockies. <laughs> Cleared it up in no time. Hey, wait a minute. The Rockies? Yeah. Well, what's the matter? That sergeant on the train coming to Vienna, what he said about that hotel up there in the mountains, do you, do you happen to remember the name of it? Well, no, but I remember the sergeant's name. It was Clancy. How can you forget a name like that? You're my boy, Joe. Where's the phone? It didn't take me long to locate Clancy. He gave me the address of the hotel, and I got the owner on the phone right away. Yeah? I can accommodate 30 people. Fine. How much will it cost for two weeks? With food at uh, 40 shillings per day, it will be 8,400 shillings altogether. 8,400. Okay, make arrangements to accommodate 30 beginning a week from today. 400 shillings is 323 dollars. And 323 smackers is, well... 323 smackers, that's a lot of coin, Blake. I know, Sarge, but here's the way I figured it. We got about 260 men in the company. 261. 261. Well, if each one of them could donate about a buck and a quarter ahead, it would just about cover it. Yeah. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll talk it over with the CEO. Maybe something will happen. Something happened, all right. Within one day after the CO started it off by donating $10, the first sergeant collected $350. And on Sunday morning, the bundled-up children were loaded into buses ready to start out on their journey to the little hotel in the Tyrolean Alps. They are so excited, Ted. <laughs> they sure are. Hope it does them some good. Oh, I'm sure it will. Ted, all this that you have done for them, it, it, it's wonderful, really. Thank the men in the company. They did it, not me. Hey, you better oh, get in there. They're starting out. Yes, Ted. You are, you are a very good man. A very good man. Auf Wiedersehen. I see you in two weeks. Yeah. Goodbye, Gerda. That was the beginning of Operation Whooping Cough. And when they returned after two weeks, the kids had recovered completely thanks to the clear mountain air. During those two weeks, though, I had done some thinking, finally made up my mind. On my first date with Gerda, after the kids returned... Yes, Ted, you and your fellow soldiers have a place in our children's hearts and in mine. Can I be sure of that? Of course. I have a place in your heart? Why, Ted, naturally. Oh, you mean... Yes, that... Gerd, I'm crazy about you. No, no, let me finish. We're not going to be around much longer. In about a month, all occupation troops will be gone from Austria. I know. There's not much time left, so you've got to know. 
I love you. And I want to marry you. Marry me? Oh, Ted, that's, that's very sweet of you, but... But you don't love me. Ted, I... I like you. I like you very much. But don't you see? You are 19 years old. I am almost 30. That doesn't matter to me. Maybe not now. But later? No, Ted, it... Your life is still ahead of you. You must live it without me. I see. But, Ted, thank you. Oh, now you are the one who is sad. That must not be. Come, we are in the Prater, Ted. I will ride the Ferris wheel with you. We must have had ten rides on the Ferris wheel that evening. But I couldn't convince her that I was right. And now, D-Day, departure day. Last night, I said goodbye to Gerda. What was it she said? When you remember Vienna, remember me. That's all she wanted. I shall, Gerda. I shall, always. Here we go. Streets are crowded with people. Wave to them, Ted. Wave to them. It's goodbye. Goodbye, Gerda. Goodbye, Vienna. If you're a young man of service age, you can be trained for success in the course of your choice by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. There are over 150 courses to choose from in such fields as radar, guided missiles, automotive maintenance, and the medical services. But, well, these are only a few. And if you act now, you can make your application and rest assured that you have a class space set aside in your name. So if you're a high school graduate we suggest you investigate this outstanding opportunity right away. For complete information, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, fellas, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>